to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new episode of My Damn Thoughts. And on this episode of My Damn Thoughts, we are covering WWE Elite Series 92. If you guys did not know what My Damn Thoughts is, it's basically a episodic series here on the channel where we cover a full set that we just received, whether it's WWE or AEW. We break down the set and we get into all the details of the set. We rank the set. We talk about the best and worst of the set. We give the whole set a ranking or a rating. And it's just a really fun way to keep up with your figure and kind of see what my overall feel is about the entire wave in its entirety and just kind of break every figure down. So if you guys missed all of our two-in-one reviews of this entire wave, definitely go check those out. I'd greatly appreciate it. In my opinion, not the best wave ever, you know, not the best wave ever, but we're going to cover all my details about it. We're going to get into all the different things, such as the best and worst, all the different things, man. So with all that being said, let's dive in and start off with my first thoughts when we first initially heard about this wave. Now, when we first heard about this wave, my initial thoughts were, holy shit, Brad, because if uh, you look at the wave? I mean, Ric Flair's in controversy. Bray Wyatt's no longer with the company, or at least we don't think he's with the company. Adam Cole is in AEW. Scarlett's no longer in the company. Rey Mysterio and Charlotte are the only two that are on good terms or in the WWE at this time of this entire wave releasing, which is just insanity. I don't think we'll ever see something like that quite uh, quite again. I mean, I don't know. With the way WWE releases people, Brad, who knows? I mean, you just release the whole company tomorrow. You never know. But that was my first thoughts. Then, you know, after the initial shock of the wave, I looked back and I was like, eh, not my favorite way, but how would that compare when I got them in hand? We will cover that at the end of the video where I give it a rating after the ranking. But let's dive into the shelf warmer of the set. Who do I think is going to shelf warm the most in this set? You have Ric Flair. You got the Burnt Fiend over here. You have Adam Cole. You have Charlotte. You have Scarlett. And you have Rey Mysterio. Now, there's a few ways you could break this down. I do have my picks for it, but I will... I, I feel like I could probably make a case for everyone in this set. Maybe outside of one, which we'll get into as, as the hottest figure. But I went with the shelf warmer of the set being Charlotte and Scarlett. These are going hand in hand. I mean, you can look across every store in America. You're probably going to find a women's figure. My Walmart right now is loaded down with Charlottes and Carmellas. Women's figures tend to shelf warm more. You know, China. Elite 54 Charlotte is in the bonafide Hall of Fame of shelf warming. It, it shelf warmed quite hard. So, I could see both of these shelf warming, especially Scarlett. I just don't think these characters are going to be most sought after. And I think you get a little more meat on the bone, as Kyle Peterson would say, with this Scarlet figure. You know, you get your different molds and things of that nature. Now, one figure that I think could shelf warm is the Fiend, and I know that sounds bonkers, but the reason I say that is because his Fiend figures were shelf warming like crazy. Like, you could go into a store and find a Elite Fiend with relative ease. It was really easy to find one. I was super shocked for it, but that could be because we got the Elite 77. We got the top picks. We had the Ultimate Edition, so by the time that we got the Elite 86, it was like, you know, why do I need this figure? So I could see that being the reason why, but uh, I wouldn't be shocked if this figure ends up shelf warming at the end of the day. So that leads us into the figure that I think is going to be the hottest, and I think that's going to be Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole will be the one that flies off the shelf the most. I think that people are going to be wanting him, much like Aleister Black, much like some of these guys that have been released for WWE, and they already have a home in AEW, and they're on TV all the time already for a different company. People are going to search this figure out. If it's at retail, they're going to grab it, you know, with it being his last figure ever, the Chase variant being so, super sought after. This figure is going to be the hottest one, and I don't have any doubts about that. I think that Ric Flair and Rey Mysterio also could possibly shelf form just because we've seen the top picks of Rey in that black and yellow shelf form quite a bit. And then the Ric Flair figure, his Ultimate Edition was kind of shelf forming a little bit in some places. And he doesn't have a robe? I don't know. It's just, it's not the most iconic Ric Flair ever, so those are other reasons that I could see those shelf forming as well. You notice that everybody in this set is kind of shelf warm esque It has a shelf warming possibility ability, and that may go into the final rating. But not only is Adam Cole the hottest figure in the set, he's also the Chase variant in the set. We covered that. You guys know that there is this version, and then there is the Camo Chase variant. The coveted Chase variant Camo War Games Adam Cole. I am still trying to search it down. I had it in my cart. I never finished the purchase. Very upsetting, but it is a figure I'm hawking down, but this is the uh, the Chase variant in the set. I also think, getting into our best head sculpt, I think Adam Cole has the best head sculpt in this wave. I think it has the most likeness. I think it, you know, it, it looks just like Adam Cole, and that is the reason that I went ahead and gave him the best head sculpt award. I felt like Ric Flair's was pretty weak. It wasn't my favorite. Burnt Fiend was good, but it wasn't like, I don't know, it got a little bit messy. I don't think it was totally accurate in its paint apps and stuff like that. Charlotte was eh. Ray, we've seen a hundred times, and I, you guys know that Scarlet ain't gonna about to get the best head sculpt award. So, Adam Cole was the best head sculpt, and Scarlet is our worst head sculpt. Now, I am in the process of repainting the eyes, which is why her eyes look so weird right now. I'm still in the process of repainting.
painting it. So that's why it kind of looks a bit off. I didn't get around to finishing it, but you guys can see like a metallic blue S going on. I still don't think it's the best. I just think her, her eye, it just doesn't capture the likeness of her eyes, man. And that's the problem with this head sculpt. So I voted hers as the worst, but if you had any others, I think Ray has a chance to be the worst. I think Charlotte has a chance to be the worst. I think Rick could be the worst. And I thought about putting the Fiend in the worst, but then I was like, it's not really fair, you know, with all the muddy details and stuff. And they have some crazy sculpts going on. Not completely their fault, I don't think. I think the sculpt is good. It's just more about the paint apps that kind of hurts the Fiend head sculpt. Now, getting into the best articulation of the set, I am going to go with Ray Mysterio as Charlotte just plummets down into the, into the concrete here. I went with Rick and I went with Ray. It was really, really hard to choose. They both just feel fantastic in the hand. But, you know, Ray Mysterio, his figures always feel fantastic in the hand. He never really has a bad figure as far as long as it's like this new body mold. I mean, he just is so good, man. He feels so good in the hand. He can do any pose you really want him to. He just feels fantastic. And anybody that owns a Ray knows what I'm talking about. But the Ric Flair feels incredible, too. He's got ball, both of these guys are on ball joints. They both have double jointed arms. They both have a good ab crunch. They both have great articulation and they both feel really good in the hand. They stand super solid. And that's what I love to see out of a figure. So those are my two best articulation figures in the set. You could really give it to either one. If I had to give it a one, I, I'd probably go with Rey Mysterio. But if you wanted to go with Ric Flair, that would be fine too. I like that one as well as far as feeling the hand. Now as far as worst articulation, it's going to go to Scarlet over here, unfortunately. She does not have an ab crunch whatsoever. Charlotte does it either, but Charlotte's legs are better, I would say. I know she has the big knee pads on there, but these ankles right here are just abysmal, man. She wants to fall forward. She wants to fall over. You know, she's also limited by her shoulders right here. Overall, I just think that the Charlotte is better articulated. I would much rather do a match with the Charlotte figure than the Scarlet figure. That's kind of where I do the best articulation segment is, is you know, I, I say, what figure do I not want to do a match with? And that's the, that's the figure that usually wins the worst, or, you know, the worst articulation segment of the My Damn Thoughts series. But she has a very troubled, tough time standing. And I know that it's not really her fault because she has these boots, but somebody's got to be there to blame and it's going to be her. So I, I apologize for that. However, getting into the best accessory. Now, this one may blow your mind, but we only had two cloth shirts in this one. Adam Cole and Ric Flair. They weren't my favorite shirts. So you know what I did? I went outside the box. A lot of people didn't have great accessories in the set. So I went with Scarlet's Hourglass. I think that Scarlet's Hourglass is the best accessory in the set. I like that it's operational right here. You get the full, you know, all the way around right there. You could unclip it. You could put this in the GM's office. Like I said, it could be used as a foreign object. You could use it in the entrances. Now, if it was like an actual hourglass with, you know, sand or, or some type of tiny flower pebbles or something like that, then it would have been even cooler, but I still like it a lot. So I went ahead and went with Scarlet's accessory as best accessory. So she, she got a little bit of something in there. Now it is time to get into the number of figures that these people have. So Ric Flair, this is definitely not his first rodeo. We had the ultimate edition Ric Flair, the defining moments number one, the defining moments second. Not that they were like the first series and the second series. There was just a first defining moments flair and then a second defining moments flair. You had the Hall of Fame four pack target exclusive. Then you had the retro fest and then you had the elite 92. I don't think he has any more elites, which is kind of mind boggling. You'd think he'd have a lot more than that. And I may have missed one or two of them, but I think I got all of them, which is kind of crazy. You would think there'd be way more than there is, but here we are. Now, as far as the Fiend goes, you have the Elite 77, you have the Ultimate Edition, you have the Elite 86, you have the Top Picks, and then you have the Elite 92. Now, you could just say this is the first Burnt Fiend we have, and that's the end of it, but I wanted to include the other versions of the Fiend for all of your Fiend figures. Elites, that is, or Ultimates. Adam Cole, he actually has a decent amount. You, you don't really think about it, but he has the Undisputed Era Epic Moments 3-pack Adam Cole. You have the Elite 71 Adam Cole, the Fan Takeover Adam Cole, this Elite Series 92, and then, of course, the Chase variant in the War Games camo, which is just beautiful. So Adam Cole has a total of five figures. So Ric Flair has six, The Fiend has five, and Adam Cole has five. For Scarlet, this is the only Scarlet we have. You do have a couple basic figures, but she has zero other elites. This is her first and only elite figure. For Charlotte, you have the Ultimate Edition, the Elite 54, and then the Elite Series 92. So as far as Ultimates and Elites, she only has three figures, not counting any basics. Again, we don't count basics over here. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have Rey Mysterio, who God in heaven has so many figures, so buckle the hell up. You have the Elite 1, the Elite 5, the Elite 11, the Elite 13, the Elite 15, the Elite 18, the Elite 21, Elite 24, Elite 32, Elite 67, Elite 69, Elite 72, Elite 88, Elite 92, Ringside Exclusive Flash Ray, the Top Picks, the Second Top Picks, WrestleMania 26, WrestleMania 35, and last but not least, the Network Spotlight Ray. My God, Rey Mysterio has 14 elites just in the main elite line.
Pokemon, and then he has 20 total Elite figures from Mattel. I cannot believe we don't have a Rey Mysterio yet. I imagine we'll get one very soon, but Rey Mysterio has a shish ton of figures, and that doesn't even count all of his basics. But dude, this guy has so many Elite figures, it's insane. So breaking this set down before we rank it, guys, uh, I want to compare it to Elite Series 90 and Elite Series 91. Elite Series 90 was pretty damn fantastic. You know, you had your Bronson Reed, Big Boss Man, Reckoning, Randy Orton, Jey Uso, and Mustafa Ali. I think Elite Series 90 kind of crushes this wave. I thought that Randy Orton was super fantastic. I thought Mustafa Ali was super fantastic. Bronson Reed was an amazing figure. It was the best Jey Uso that we had seen. You had Big Boss Man with a repeat, but he was upgraded. And then Reckoning was a pretty solid women's figure in itself. She had a cloth goods jacket. You had a great cloth goods jacket from Bronson Reed. You had a sick cloth shirt with the fringe from Jey Uso. You had another cloth shirt for Mustafa Ali. New molds for Big Boss Man. And then don't even get me started on Elite Series 91 that featured Bianca Belair, Olsen Theory, Rob Van Dam, and the Tiger Stripes, Hulk Hogan, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens. I think this set kind of fails in comparison to those two sets. It's definitely a step down from both of those. Even Elite Series 89 was superior, I think. So I really do not like this wave as a whole. It just doesn't move the needle a lot for me, and, and that is why I'm going to give it a, a rating of 5.5 or 6 out of 10. I just, I'm not the biggest fan of this wave. It doesn't move the needle in my opinion. I think it's kind of a, just a, a wash. Lots of kind of shelf warmers, lots of people that I just am not going to search out. Very skippable figures. You do have the Fiend, which has all of like the bells and whistles, and I do love the Adam Cole, but the rest of the set is just kind of a bummer to me. Let me know what you think down below. But now, it is time to rank the set. So coming in at the bottom of the set for me, and this actually was a very hard ranking to make, and I'll get into all those different things as we break it down as we move along here. But I'm going to go with Charlotte. Now, this one was very difficult. I honestly didn't want to put this figure here because I think it's pretty good. But at the end of the day, I think it's the figure that I would least like to have, you know? And if you guys didn't know the criteria for the ranking, it's basically excitement level for the figure, how the figure feels in hand, how, how poseable is it, is it a good head sculpt, how much usage am I going to get, accessories, all these different things kind of go into play. But Charlotte was the figure that I would least likely want. If you lined up all these figures, this is the one that I would say eh to the least. I think it's because we have our Ultimate Edition and it's just so good good that it's hard to compete with and this figure is not bad it also like the articulation isn't that hindered by the big knee pads which is crazy the gear's not bad there's not a lot of sculpt going on head sculpt isn't like perfect it's not terrible but it's not my favorite so charlotte came in at the bottom and it really pained me because it's not a bad charlotte whatsoever coming in at number five we have our father rick flair and you know just the accuracy of the figure right i mean like his torso could have been more accurate it's not my favorite gear i do like that we got the yellow it is a different take and you no know, and now we can go on to different gears but it's not my favorite gear. I don't think it's the best head sculpt either. I, like, it's not a bad head sculpt again. It's kind of like Charlotte. It's not a bad head sculpt. It's just not my favorite. I don't think it's like, wow, that looks exactly like Ric Flair kind of deal. So that's kind of where I am. Kind of like Adam Cole, right? Adam Cole, I look at it and I go, damn, that, that's freaking Adam Cole. So that's that's kind of where I am there. But I do like the Ric Flair. poses around really well. I'm glad to have another Ric Flair, but at the same time, not my favorite figure in the set. Doesn't move the needle a lot for me. Doesn't have a robe. I went with number five for Ric Flair. Coming in at number four, we have Rey Mysterio. Now, this one may have shocked the hell out of some people just because they know how much I love Ray's figures because they feel so damn good in the hand. But this gear just kind of ruined it. Like, if he had better gear and a different head sculpt, he really would be near the top. Uh, it's just kind of the repeat head sculpt did it in and then the attire because his, his body mold that they use is perfection, really. And so any parts that I could deduct attire colorways and you know accessories it's a repeat of the same accessory repeat of the same head sculpt so the body mold and the, the movement in the hand is only going to carry you so far you know there's other criteria to the ranking so Ray Mysterio comes in at number four and that pained me really to do as well coming in at number three may be a shocker as well man but I'm going with the burnt fiend now I honestly I almost ranked this dead ass last and I'm going to be honest with you right here I just thought that the sculpting was so damn good and he can actually pose around really well that he needed some that he deserved a spot at the number three i just don't think that it's my most favorite figure uh it's one of those figures that i think will always be a claim to the overrated spot to me i just think that he he doesn't look the best he doesn't look menacing he just kind of looks like frumpy dumpkins and it's really hard for me to change that aspect of it and it may just be one of those guys that you can't really replicate in figure form you know it's it's kind of difficult i wasn't a big fan of the head sculpt it wasn't like menacing it just kind of looks like muddy wash which i know he's 
just a burnt fiend guy, and I understand that. I just think the shape is a bit off. I don't like how you have like this big neck flap where it looks like he's just wearing a big mask over the top of a, of a head. It doesn't like flow naturally from the head to the traps to the shoulders. It's it's very it, it, like it poses around pretty solid. You can't turn him all the way around. His waist is a little bit loose, but he he has some solid articulation and everything. He just looks so short and frumpy again that uh, it, it puts me off. But I think that the sculpt and the paint apps definitely deserve to be here at the number three spot. That's why he's a ranked of the rest. I think he is a unique figure and all those things, but I did want to get all those thoughts out about this Fiend figure here in the Mod M Thoughts. Let me know what you think of the Burnt Fiend. A lot of people are praising the hell out of it. I, I think it is nice and it's cool and it's just so outside the box, but at the same time, man, you got to call a spade a spade, and that's where I feel about the Burnt Fiend figure. Coming in at number two and one, I went with Scarlet number two and Adam Cole number one. At the end of the day, Adam Cole, well, let's just get into Scarlet first. Scarlet, I actually like the attire they went with a lot. I love the double jointed arms that we got. I love the added like rubber claws that she's got right here. She looks like a menacing character, which I really like. If her head sculpt looked a lot more like her and I didn't have this super loosey goose ankle joints, if they had made that a little bit more stiff and better to stand, who knows where this figure would be, you know? So I, I don't know, but those are the things that I do know. And I just like how unique the figure is. I like how unique the figure is. It looks like Scarlet from the neck down, at least. It's very menacing. I think it does the opposite of what the Burnt Fiend does. You know, it, it actually looks villainous. It looks evil. It looks nice. I know it has the worst head sculpt, but it's really just the eyes. I think the head's solid. It's, it's more of just the eyes being repainted, I think. So, Scarlet comes in at number two, and then Adam Cole's number one, because he's pretty much perfect. They use the short legs, and it's something that they always do, but like AJ Styles, he could come in at number one. I hate the formula, but he could come in at number one if they did every Everything correctly I think but they gave him a unique gear he's got double jointed arms I like the head sculpt it's a phenomenal head sculpt it's the best head sculpt that he has I just like the figure a lot man I think I would rather have this Adam Cole than every other figure in the set and that's what it comes down to I told you guys it's a it's a pretty weak set it really is a really weak set I like this I like the Hail Mary bombs that they threw in this set with the fiend and like the uniqueness of it but at the same time I'd rather have Scarlet and Adam Cole over the Fiend at the number three spot there. But let's recount it, man. At number one, we have Adam Cole. At number two, we have Scarlet. At number three, we have the Burnt Fiend. At number four, we have Rey Mysterio. At number five, we have Rick. And at number six, we have Charlotte. I would love to know down below what your ranking is, man. I know a lot of people are going to rank Fiend number one, and I get it. You know, I totally understand it. But I'm just giving my honest opinions about it, man. I'm, I'm just being real with you. You're going to come to this channel. You're going to get your... Like, when you watch my reviews, you're getting my full-fledged honest opinion about these figures, man. I'm not going to sit here and just praise a figure just to praise it. I'm going to give you my straight thoughts through and through. And I hope you guys get that authenticity when you come to the My Damn Toys channel. But thank you guys for watching that. Is going to wrap up my damn thoughts on Elite Series 92. Let me know all of your damn thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm getting out of here, man. Don't cross the line like Elite 92. I, pr I pray that Elite 93 is a lot better. I think it will be with Seth and Cesaro and all these things going on, but we'll have to see when it gets in hand, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for AEW Unrivaled Series number 8, which we will also do a my damn thoughts on. You cross the line.